lately we've had a lot of questions that we have been able to get to and I just finished doing the story questions and I used all 100 slides and I still didn't get to most of them. So I've been feeling kind of bad about that. I've also been putting the question sticker up at least twice a week on my personal account to help fill that out. But I wrote down a bunch of the questions that I missed today. So I'm just going to go through and cover them. First one is how to lower cholesterol naturally. This is one of those things that comes up a lot and there's a few things to it. Number one, they've lowered the bar on what constitutes high cholesterol. So we consider healthy cholesterol to be in between 220 and 240. There's not a single disease that's caused by elevated blood cholesterol. Normal cholesterol for a human being is 220 to 270. Where did I get that figure? It's from a study that was done back in uh, the 1950s at the University of California, San Francisco. Stephen B. Hulley was the guy who is a cardiologist and he's also a, an epidemiologist. He looked at 300,000 people. Of those 300,000, 6% had blood cholesterol below 200. And for the start of the study for 20 years, he thought they were going to be the ones that have the fewest cardiovascular events and, and live the longest. Well, the ones who lived the longest and didn't have any cardiovascular events were ones who had cholesterol of 220, 270. He reported that the Journal of the American Medical Association, you know how many doctors paid attention to it? Zero. They have all these cute little gals coming from the pharmaceutical companies and their little mini skirts to the doctors, taking them out to lunch, and they all write prescriptions for Mevacor, Lipitor, Zocor, and all those core things, right? They lower your cholesterol. Well, I actually did a study. When you do 20,000 autopsies and 10 million chemistries, you have a lot of material. I wrote 75 scientific papers. One of my papers was I compared the coronary artery plugging in vegetarians and vegans versus meat eaters. Guess who had the worst plugged arteries? Vegans. And those are the people that live the longest and have the least amounts of heart disease. So 220 to 240 is where you want to be at. Chances are, if you have 220 to 240, your physician will actually tell you that that's too high. So just keep that in mind. They've lowered the bar because they don't know what they're talking about when it comes to cholesterol in the first place. Second thing to consider is that one of the first signs of a blood sugar problem is elevated blood cholesterol. As soon as you have a blood sugar problem, you have a blood cholesterol problem, basically. So the problem is not, it's nothing to do with your intake of cholesterol. There's very little correlation between how much cholesterol you eat and how much cholesterol is actually in your blood. Now, if you eat a crazy ton amount of cholesterol, you are going to have higher blood cholesterol like the Inuit people. Again, it's not necessarily a problem. Cholesterol is what your cell membrane is made of. Cholesterol is what the bile salts are made of that help convert your food once it's after it's been broken down in the acidic stomach, it goes into the intestine, it's met with bile salts. Those bile salts are made of cholesterol that converts that food material into an alkaline, which you need to be absorbed into the intestines. I'm just going through how important cholesterol is, right? There's a lot of misconceptions about cholesterol. Not only that, all your sex hormones are derived from cholesterol, testosterone, progesterone, adrenaline, and more, right? So many of your hormones are directly derived from cholesterol. We've got a question on here coming up about vitamin D that's gonna be involved in here as well. Vitamin D is also directly connected and derived from cholesterol. So this is excessively important. You know, Through all systems in your body, cholesterol is excessively important. So a doctor telling you you have high cholesterol, it's not necessarily a problem, but it could be a problem. It could be a sign of a blood sugar problem. That's what needs to be addressed. It's not the cholesterol. Again, Dr. Wallach found high cholesterol and plaque in the arteries of Atlas sheep that never consume cholesterol, they don't eat cholesterol. They were consuming oxidized grains. In the story today, we mentioned that this is part of the problem. Could have a blood sugar problem directly causing the spike in blood, that's one thing. Could also have damage to the inside of the veins. When you're eating oxidized food, oxidized grains, anything that's rancid, this means oxidized basically. This is well done red meat, burned fats of any kind, burned animal fats particularly, but especially oxidized oils, right? So when the Atlas sheep got high cholesterol, it's not really because of the grains themselves, it's because the oils were rancid in them. They've been sitting out, whatever, they got old, they turned rancid, that's the word. Oxidized oils, free radicals, well done red meat, processed meat, the skins of baked potatoes, these are all on our list for a similar reason, because these compounds they can be given different names. They might not always be called free radicals. They might be called acrylamide or heterocyclic amines. They might be called trans fatty acid, but it's all the same end result of free radical damage. You must understand what free radicals are. Free oxygen radicals. Oxygen is a highly reactive molecule. It wants to bond with everything. It's why you don't find free oxygen. You also don't find free water. There's no such thing as pure water in nature. Water always wants to bind with things, both hydrogen and oxygen are highly reactive. So when you have free oxygen radicals, it wants to bond with things. This is what causes damage in our tissues, bonding to the other molecules in our body. 
This is the reason that we need antioxidants. Antioxidants, anti-free radical oxygen molecules. This is what they do. Oxygen. Antioxidants neutralize free radicals. This is why we want to lower the consumption of free radicals. Free radicals are a natural occurrence of us using energy. Anytime we expend any energy, free radicals are produced. Anytime we breathe, we're producing, creating free radicals, a small amount of them. Anytime we digest things, we are producing free radicals. This is one of the reasons that calorie restriction doubles and triples the lifespan of animals because there's less free radical damage just by virtue of there being less digestion. This could even be good foods. You could eat all, all the good foods you want. If you're eating too many of them, you're producing too many free radicals. You can't out supplement that. Some of the essential nutrients are themselves antioxidants. I'm talking about vitamin C, vitamin E, selenium, zinc, right? These, these are essential for the structure and function of the body, structure or function. Some of them are both minerals are both. That means the structure means you build your body with it. Function means you use it to as a cofactor or a reactor to do things. So the vitamins are mostly going to be function, right? They're, they're reactive cofactors, but you don't build your actual tissues with them mostly. But minerals are both minerals are both cofactors and you actually use it to build the, the, the structure, your actual tissues, your actual body. Why am I going into detail on this? Because it's the question was how to lower cholesterol naturally. So number one, correct your blood sugar. Don't eat processed sugar ever. Get off all the bad foods in general, specifically gluten and sugar, though. Those are going to be your two big bad ones for causing blood sugar problems. And get on the 90 essential nutrients because at the bottom line, your body requires these nutrients in order to metabolize sugar. There's two key ones in there. We don't like to mention them because people tend to go out and buy those two key nutrients. Those nutrients have multiple cofactors. This is why we say the 90 essential nutrients. You could boost those two above. We've got a product called Sweet Ease is the main one to do it. We have some other products, but it's usually not necessary. Usually the person just needs to get off the bad foods and get on the 90 essential nutrients and they should be able to achieve healthy blood sugar. I should also mention in here salt. A lot of people are still struggle with their blood sugar just getting off the bad foods, particularly because they're creating a, a dehydration problem by not using enough salt. This is why the salt flush is on our mandatory list. Anybody who messages us, if we give you a protocol, it's always going to include the salt flush to top you up with salt and to teach you to become more sensitive to salt, just like a cattle or a cow or a goat. They're going to have a salt lick. They know how, exactly how much they need. You don't give a, a cow exactly how much you think it needs. You give it the salt block. Its body will lick until it's had enough and then it will stop and you can't force it to have any more than that. And it's the same with your body. You, you can't force yourself to have too much salt. You'll throw up. You won't be able to eat the meal, it, no matter how polite you are. Anyways, salt. Why? Why? Because this is important. Blood sugar problems and dehydration problems tend to go hand in hand. It's not like one is causing the other. It's just that the person is not in balance with what they're eating. So you get rid of the grains, you get rid of the sugar. Obviously, you should get rid of the other bad foods anyways, especially why? Because it damages the arteries, it damages the veins. By the way, artery, vein, vessel, those are all the same thing for different sizes of veins, right? An artery is just a bigger vein. A vessel is just a smaller vein. And you can imagine those, those smaller veins, those smaller vessels, they can get damaged more easily. They're more delicate tissues. There's less surface area. So if you've got damage going on by free radicals, it's going to show up largely in those smaller vessels first. And by the way, the vascular system, it's quite incredible. It starts out with these big arteries from the heart. And it branches out into smaller and smaller spot, uh, parts like tree branches. Basically, they get smaller and smaller until they turn into little tiny vessels and they literally reach every cell in our body. This is how uh, we get nutrients and oxygen and sugars and, and waste in and out of the cells. It's through this vascular system. This is why people with a blood sugar problem, some of the first signs that they notice are tingling fingertips, right? Numb fingers, numb hands. Blindness, not full-blown blindness, but eye problems, kidney problems, right? In our experience, almost no one has an actual kidney problem. They have a vascular problem because the kidney is full of these tiny little vessels, tiny little blood vessels. So is the eyes. So if there is free radical damage going on or if they are being clogged up by cholesterol caused by a blood sugar problem, that's where these is going to show up, right? Even numb ears. People say that my ears are always numb. My fingertips are always numb having trouble seeing, my eyes have degenerated, I'm only 30 years old, I'm only 20 years old, but my eyes aren't as good as they were when I was a kid. This is the vessels being impacted probably by a blood sugar problem, 
probably by a combination of a blood sugar problem and damage inside of the veins. This is why we say get rid of all the bad foods, right? Gluten, sugar, deep fried food, stir fried, any oils, processed meat, well done red meat, the skins of baked potatoes. That's the basic list for getting rid of the, this large free radical burden on the body. And by the way, I don't like to bring up smoking very much, but it's a very good comparison. To me, it's always been a very good comparison. Everybody thinks smoking is bad. Even smokers think smoking is bad. But if you smoke a cigarette under a fume hood and capture all that smoke and you weigh it, it weighs practically nothing. So even if it was 100% free radicals, it can't possibly cause as much damage to the veins and the vessels by way of free radicals bonding with anything in the veins. It can't possibly outweigh a French fry. A French fry is drenched in oil, oxidized oil, basically all free radicals. That's more than multiple cartons worth of cigarettes, right? You can't smoke that much. You would die of asphyxiation. You would, you would suffocate basically before you could physically smoke as much free radicals as you could get in one French fry or one piece of burned meat, something like that, right? So you want to avoid all these foods, take pressure off of the vascular system, obviously avoid a blood sugar problem. I did mention salt there as well. I'm going to go back. I'm going to circle back to the salt because one of the things that you could do to stabilize your blood sugar besides avoiding the bad foods and taking the 90 essential nutrients is not eating before bed, number one, and being properly hydrated. Proper hydration is absolutely key to a healthy body in general, but a lot of these blood sugar symptoms that show up happen at night, right? Teeth grinding, excessive night sweating, nightmares, waking up in the middle of the night for no reason, waking up in the middle of the night to urinate, and even narcolepsy, falling asleep all the time. These are all blood sugar problems. Part of what you can do is avoid eating a few hours before bed. Better several hours before bed, you don't want to eat. You don't want to drink wine right before bed, especially if you're experiencing these problems, right? Once you get a hold of these things, you can eat a little bit closer to bed, but even once you're completely healthy, eating right before bed is very likely to cause you to wake up sweating, not knowing what's going on. If you're already prone to grinding your teeth and you haven't got a hold of that again, you're probably going to be doing it the worst on the nights that you eat right before. Coffee and alcohol both deplete us of these water-soluble nutrients. Salt, B vitamins, vitamin C, the whole calcium group, calcium, magnesium, the whole bone joint group, these are all water-soluble nutrients. So when you drink coffee, when you drink alcohol, this depletes those nutrients. It speeds up the rate that your body dumps those nutrients. This is why coffee is often called a diuretic, right? It speeds up the rate that you're dumping water and you're dumping these water soluble nutrients. The easiest way to get a hold of that, obviously just get on the regular supplements. They got lots of B vitamins in it. Obviously we're always recommending the bone and joint group anyways. You should be getting adequate amounts of that, adequate amounts of that. But salt is one of those things where we need to stay on top of all the time, right? We wake up dehydrated. One of the best strategies is to wake up and drink a glass of salty water. It's just salty enough for you to taste it. Not so it's offensively salty, but I put quite a lot of salt in in the morning. Then I drink my coffee and I know that depletes me of basically the salt that I just put in. So I drink another glass of salty water. This is hydration. This is key for hydration. People think that hydration means water. It's not. It means water plus the water soluble nutrients and they need to be in balance. If you drink salty water, it makes you more thirsty, right? Because you get more water soluble nutrients. Now you need more water. If a lot of people are just drinking water or they're drinking water with sugar added into it or something like that, orange juice, something like that. This makes you require more salt. If you don't have enough salt, it's very likely that this is going to be contributing to a blood sugar problem. Someone asked here about a pre-diabetic -di pre diet. It's the same thing. It's pre-diabetic is just blood sugar is not that bad yet to be fully called diabetic. It doesn't matter. Same protocol. It's no special diet. You need to get off the bad foods. We always recommend replacing those bad foods with good fats and protein. And basically all fat is good unless it's burned or it's oxidized or it's rancid. Same category of things here. So it's basically the keto diet, but you don't need to be fully keto. We're never out there saying you got to go 100% keto. You don't have to go 100% keto. But listening to the keto people is going to give you a lot of ideas on what you can eat and how you can replace processed carbs and sugar with fats. I'm going to move on to the next question here because actually the next question is, is very similar. The first question was how to lower cholesterol naturally went into detail on the blood sugar problem. The next question is reduce excessive sweating. It's probably a blood sugar problem. So more salt, more salty water. You want to make sure that you're salting everything that you eat to taste. 
meaning to the point where you can taste it. Doesn't mean salt it as much as you want. It means salt everything until you can taste the salt. It tastes delicious at that point. Once you go beyond that point, it starts to taste repulsive. Excessive sweating, whether it's during the day or the night, is probably a blood sugar problem. You want to get off the bad foods, you want to get on the 90 essential nutrients, you want to make sure you're having enough salt. Now, there could be some, there could be some other things to the excessive sweating. I mean, I'm, I'm just guessing that they're eating the wrong foods and they're not supplementing and that's the problem. I will save this live, by the way, yes. Someone says here, it's obviously a digestive issue if the body isn't using fat storage for energy, right? I wouldn't necessarily call it a digestive issue. Digestive issue could be involved here, but the, the point is they're not getting their adequate nutrition. When your body is getting nutrition from food, how it's supposed to, or from supplements mimicking the same system through the digestive system, your body gets energy by metabolizing those nutrients. And it is true that your body can get more energy from fat than carbs, especially if you're full ketogenic. I, I don't know if you need to be completely ketogenic. A lot of people say that. They say you gotta be, you gotta be in keto mode to be actually accessing that energy benefit. And that benefit I think is eight to one. I think it's nine to one, some people say, but call it eight to one, meaning you know, for one part, one unit of fat to one unit of carb, you get eight times more energy from the fat than you do the carb. And uh, it, it lasts a lot longer. It's a slow burn, basically. It's uh, the difference between an oil burner furnace that you know, just drips oil into the furnace and you, you get basically continuous heat energy from that uh, rather than throwing wood in, right? You throw some wood chips in and it, it lights up really quickly. This is like what happens when we eat carbs all the time. When we're eating carbs all the time, we're staying hungry all the time. This is because the energy doesn't last very long that we get from it. And by the way, the excessive sweating thing too, it could also be the same thing that they're consuming too much caffeine, too much energy drinks. Those are gonna be the two big culprits, depleting us further of those water soluble nutrients and making us dehydrated. Sweating, excessive sweating is basically a sign of dehydration. And uh, you know, someone who dies of heat stroke, they're going to have been excessively sweating first. And what's, if you go into the hospital with heat stroke, or most things, if you go into the hospital, they're gonna stick an IV in you with saline solution, salt solution. They're gonna put salt in your veins. So if you are excessively sweating, you wanna make sure you're properly hydrated. Properly hydrated. Keep that in mind. Again, a lot of people too, they're buying Gatorade or something like that. Read the label. It's, it's salt and sugar. You don't need the sugar, but it's the salt. That's, that's why they can say it's an electrolyte drink. This is, all of these water-soluble nutrients are electrolytes, and we require them for hydration. So that should reduce excessive sweating. That should help reduce cholesterol in the blood. And is it obviously a digestive issue if the body isn't using fat storage for energy? Again, not necessarily. It just means that the body is not healthy. It's not totally healthy. I don't know if this person is eating the bad foods. I don't know if they're on the 90 essential nutrients. I don't know if they're adequately hydrated, but that's, that's all there is. You should have a healthy metabolism if you do that, right? You don't need anything special for that. The next question here, Taking 5,000 IU of vitamin D daily, still low. I assume they're low by a blood test. How can I aid absorption? Well, 5,000 IU, first of all, is the sort of the maximum that we would recommend. We wouldn't recommend taking more than 5,000 IU. And this is particularly true in supplement form. Out of the 90 essential nutrients, vitamin D is a weird one. It's a hormone. It is derived from cholesterol. So hopefully this person is adequately consuming cholesterol because they're directly involved. But supplementing with vitamin D is the worst way to get it. The best way to get vitamin D is from the sun. By far, it's, and it's by, by, by far the best way to get it is from the sun. If you can't get it from the sun, the second best way to get it is from food. That's from egg yolks, organ meats, even red meat. It's going to be my opinion, but egg yolk is going to be number one. So if you're not eating eggs, you're not getting the best food source of vitamin D that there is. And if you take too much vitamin D supplementally, meaning more than 5,000 IU, could be more, I don't know this person's weight, but I wouldn't go over 5,000 IU. If you take too much vitamin D in supplement form, it can create what's called hypervitaminosis, something we don't talk about that much, but it is a possibility. This basically looks exactly like calcium deficiency. If you have too much vitamin D and you're experiencing hypervitaminosis, again, that word doesn't apply to all the vitamins, it just applies to hormone form supplemental vitamin D. Can't get it with eggs can't get it with egg yolks, you won't get hypervitaminosis with egg yolks, but you can get it with liquid or tablet version vitamin D. And this could mean, so this could mean achy joints, this could mean back pain, this could mean 
bleeding gums, any of these things are already in the calcium deficiency category. So too much vitamin D without those balancing factors can make you look like you have a raging calcium deficiency. Now everybody's already got a calcium deficiency anyways, unless you're supplementing or you're eating bone meal every day, you know, for your whole life, you already have a calcium deficiency. So you can imagine when you add more of that vitamin D to that category, and that's all there was in this question. I don't know what else they're taking. I assume they're not taking anything else. That's going to be thrown off the, the entire cake recipe. You can't make a cake with just flour. You know, it needs these other factors. And this is part of the reason why some people say like uh, ascorbic acid is bad or something. Well, when ascorbic acid is, is in a plant, in, in a food, it's called vitamin C, right? It comes with all these other phytonutrients that helps your body metabolize it and absorb it. Same thing with when we're giving supplements. We're not telling you just to go consume vitamin C or vitamin D for that matter. We're telling you to take all 90 essential nutrients and our regular products already have those balance of the other nutrients, the other vitamins. Some of them are called phytonutrients. It's all in there. Most of them have food components as well. This is part of why the recipe works so well. It also has all the minerals, the trace minerals, which are the cofactors for all this. <clears throat> So for everybody just joining, the question here that we're dealing with is, I'm taking 5,000 IU of vitamin D daily and I'm still low in the blood. I'm assuming I added the blood thing. I'm assuming that's where they're, they're seeing it. How can I aid absorption? It's all gonna be the regular advice. You get off the bad foods, you get on the other 89 essential nutrients. So you take all 90 essential nutrients. You probably, <clears throat> probably don't even need to supplement with vitamin D depending on where they live. Obviously winter's coming if they're in the north. Okay, you can supplement with it. But if you're eating eggs like we're gonna recommend anyways, then you probably don't need to supplement with it. I do supplement with vitamin D in the winter, 5,000 IU, not every single day. And I do the days that I eat more eggs, I don't eat eggs every single day, but the days that I do, I don't really take the vitamin D supplement. So how can you aid absorption? You don't need to do anything specific. That whole salt thing applies. Basically, just get healthy and then you should not have low vitamin D in your blood. This means there's a lack of cofactors somewhere. Since she's not, I think it's a she, since she's not experiencing hypervitaminosis, I assume that that's not the problem, right? She is taking the vitamin D. She doesn't have the cofactors to metabolize the vitamin D. She could be avoiding cholesterol in food and that could be a big factor. Either way, all of these things, and if anybody has any questions about any specifics or how this would apply to you, you can always DM us because we're always gonna do the same thing. We're gonna send you the list of questions. We're gonna answer it with any specific advice that you might need. And then we're gonna copy and paste the food recommendations, copy and paste the, um, the salt recommendations, and then give you some options on supplements because the, the, the way that you add up the 90 essential nutrients is not as important as getting on a baseline dose. Most people can skimp on the doses and do just fine, even though we recommend taking more, but you won't have low vitamin D if you have the other nutrients present. Next question here. I'm already on BTT, which is Beyond Tangy Tangerine, which is our main multi, product. It's got all the vitamins in it, all the amino acids in it. The only thing it doesn't have is the omegas. It does not, <clears throat> it does not have enough of the bone and joint supplements. I should have put a glass of water here. I get a hoarse throat when going on these lives and just talking continuously, but it doesn't have enough of the bone and joint nutrients in it. But anyways, the question is what to do when we feel a cold coming on or a tickle in the throat? Well, I would recommend you be on the, the rest of the 90 essential nutrients. Again, a lot of people think that Beyond Tangy Tangerine is the thing a lot of people actually message us and they say i'm on the 90 the 90 product and we say well which products are you on they say well i'm on tangy tangerine tangy tangerine is a great product it's the first one that i was introduced to uh, my friends were addicted to it i got addicted to it very quickly we couldn't live without it basically but it's not the whole story if anybody's seen my story it's the very first one on igtv here it's it tells basically the story that i was already on this product and it didn't fix the problem because my problem was a bone and joint problem, muscle problem, same category. So it wasn't until I took the bone and joint product, OsteoFX is the main one that we have, we have a few others, but it wasn't until I took the proper dose of that one that my pain went away. Basically my insomnia went away and all these things went away. <clears throat> so you wanna be on the full 90 essential nutrients. The BTT does have a, a blanket baseline dose of those nutrients, but it just does not have enough of the bone and joint. Why? Again, we need so much of this bone and joint stuff. The natural longest lived populations, they eat the whole animal, they eat the bones, they make soup out of the bones and they grind those bones up and they make bone meal and they add that into pretty much everything that they're eating and anything that's left from that, they still throw that into the compost heap where they feed it to the pigs and they put the pig manure in the, in the fields. You see what I mean? So they're recycling all those bone and joint minerals and they're, they're consuming large amounts of that every day. 
This is a big part of our actual skeleton body weight. You know, we're made of this stuff. Whereas the vitamins, although Tangy Tangerine has a lot of the vitamins in it, it's got mega doses of the vitamins in it. Those are mostly for reactions. Someone asked, can you mix BTT and OsteoFX? Absolutely, I do that, mostly because I'm lazy. If you're on a budget and you wanna really get the absolute bang for your buck out of these products, you wanna sip the Tangy Tangerine throughout the day, and OsteoFX doesn't matter, you can chug it. But I mix them together, I do it twice. I do one scoop, one scoop, shake it up, drink that, I do that twice a day. Anyways, so they should, be on the, they should be on the full dose of all these products and you're less likely to get sick anyways, but we're not invincible, we're still going to catch cold or something. And what can you do if you feel a tickle in the throat? My first answer, my first answer is, sorry, I just got an email there and it distracted me. Take diatomaceous earth. Everybody should have diatomaceous earth in their house at all times, a big bag of it. Why? Because it's super cheap. And because it's super effective as an antibacterial, antimicrobial, antifungal, any of that, you can even put it around the base of your plants so that you know, bugs and stuff don't get your plants. Like this is incredibly anti-bad bug, basically. So at the moment I'll feel any sort of a tickle in my throat, any sort of a, a food, uh, any, sorry, I'm getting distracted reading these things. Any sort of a food illness or anything like that, I'm gonna take diatomaceous earth immediately and usually that, that takes care of it. If you have colloidal silver in the house, you could add that as well. This is, again, the question was, what do I do if I feel a tickle coming on? Well, I'd, I'd throw in diatomaceous earth, a big old two, three scoops of diatomaceous earth, mix that up, take that. If you have colloidal silver, it's another good reason to have colloidal silver in the house even if you don't take it every day, it's great. Guys, I'm not gonna spell it, you can DM us, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna type everything out. There's so many questions, I gotta keep talking diatomaceous earth, they're made of diatomes. Diatomes are single-celled shelled organisms. Diatomaceous earth is becoming more and more popular. We promote it all the time. Sometimes we just call it DE, but it's so cheap. It's cheap as dirt. And in the business, we call it dirt. That's what we call it, right? So just take some dirt. But, uh, you can get it for 10 bucks a pound or less. You can buy 10 pound bags. I've seen them for 20 bucks, right? So especially in America, thank you Shaba for, for typing that out, diatomaceous earth. I'm just not gonna do the typing right now. I don't wanna mess things up. Yeah, it's so cheap. It's the cheapest product that you can really get. It's not a supplement, but it'll clear your system out. It works for nearly everybody to you know, get rid of constipation or just help overall clear the system, clear the, all the gunk in the intestines and stuff like that. But as it's going down your system, it's electrically killing things, basically. By the way, for this is true for livestock too. They use diatomaceous earth or oyster shells. Same thing, they're shells. They have an electrical charge, and when you feed them to an animal or a human, it kills pathogens with that electrical charge. So the question was about a, a sore throat. It's part of the reason I love diatomaceous earth. Colloidal silver has a selective action. It's like magic. It, it selectively attacks bad stuff, but you got to put that in the body, and it sort of has to be absorbed, and it, it acts medicinally, more medicinally like that. Diatomaceous earth, you mix it in water. You don't use metal for it. You use plastic or wood or ceramic or something it should say on the label but again since it's a, a track, attracted to pathogens this means if it, there's something in your mouth you know if you got a, an infection in your mouth you can swish it around if you have some, a tickle in your throat maybe that bacteria is in the throat so it should actually kill it on contact right that's why i love it someone says how much do you take i like to take two heaping tablespoons of it at a time that's a good serving Part of the reason for taking a big serving of it is because it's a mechanical action. It's literally creating like a boulder that's running through your system, clearing it out. So you can imagine the intestines are very flexible and all this. So if you don't take enough of it, it could just stimulate a bowel movement. That's sort of what it, it can happen very quickly. Basically it happens too quick for it to be a, an effect of it going through the system. Some people, we give them diatomaceous earth, literally two minutes later, they're like, I can't even finish this conversation. I have to run to the bathroom. It's stimulating the, the bowel movement, but you want to take that big dose so that you've got a nice big boulder of it running through. So the same where to buy it. You can buy it at any health food store and you can buy it on Amazon. Most health food stores will have it. Again, it is very, very cheap. Most of them will bag it themselves. We bag it or buy it by the ton and bag it ourselves. They often have the same label on it. And usually they'll even barter with you, by the way, since it's not a, it's not a standard product. Like it doesn't come from a standard manufacturer that demands that you buy it for this price and you sell it for this price, you can even haggle with them. Health food stores. I mean, my mom just got one a pound for $5 Canadian. Most people here are American. That's like three bucks. 
you know, that's, it's unbelievably cheap, basically, and a pound is, is good enough, but it's, you, it's worth having a 10 pound bag in the house because of this question was, what do I do if I have a tickle in the throat? Well, anybody in the family can have a tickle in the throat at any time. And you don't want to have to run out to the health food store and get more. And it's just so darn cheap that it's worth having in the house. It never spoils since it's anti uh, everything, antibacterial, antifungal, antimicrobial. It doesn't spoil, right? You can leave it in the cupboard forever. It doesn't matter. It might get a bit clumpy if, you, if it's uh, moist in the house or whatever, but it doesn't make any difference at all. So that's what I would do. Colloidal, sorry, colloidal silver or diatomaceous earth. Again, it's worth having both of those in the house all the time. This person already has tangy tangerine. You can take a bit more tangy tangerine. All that's good. You know, all that's going to help your immune system actually function. But remember, the immune system's a different thing. The immune system, it requires, you know, being in the blood and then it's got to mobilize the white blood cells to go and attack this thing. Diatomaceous earth is a more mechanical action. You put it in, it literally kills things on contact. I mean, I put them on ant hills. If I see there's ants in my house anywhere, I'm going to find where they're coming in. I'll put a little bit of diatomaceous earth there. They never come in again. It's, it's kind of incredible that way. So it's, it, it's different than just supporting your immune system. You take more tangy tangerine, you absorb it. Okay, that supports your immune system, but your immune system still has to mobilize to actually kill that pathogen. Whereas again, you can just attack it directly with diatomaceous earth. Now, you've probably heard a lot of people say things like, uh, take this tincture or this herbal concoction, maybe it's oil of oregano, something like that. Well, that's okay too, but it's again, a medicinal action. It's got to go into the system and work in the system. Whereas diatomaceous earth works on contact. And that's part of why I believe it works so much more effectively. Now, I'm going to take a side route here because there's a, there's a CD that Ben Fuchs, pharmacist Ben Fuchs, he put out many years ago. I think it's called the divine magnificence of nutrition. It's such a Ben Fuchs title. It's unbelievable in that CD. It might be on YouTube as well. In that CD, he goes into detail where if somebody is feeling a tickle in their throat or they're feeling like they're getting sick, like they're getting a cold or they're getting a the flu, he actually recommends vigorous exercise at that time. And he explains it like, well, if, if you're feeling sick, it's very easy for us to play into that and to you know do grandma's method and stay home from school and have hot showers and have bone broth. You're basically accepting the illness. Part of this is mental, but mental and physical work highly, highly together. So his hack for this is to vigorously exercise at that time. And obviously we don't really feel like vigorously exercising if we're feeling a little tickle in our throat or something, but I, I've tried it a few times and I've, I find the whole philosophy interesting and I've, I believe it. I believe that his theory works that if you just catch it right before it actually becomes a sickness and you refuse to allow that sickness and you do a vigorous exercise instead and you just go about your day as regular to do all your healthy stuff normally anyways, obviously you're avoiding the bad foods and you're taking your supplements anyways, that you can beat the illness that way. And that's not scientifically proven. Maybe there is some scientific evidence for that, but it's worth a try. It's worth a try. Why not do, do some pushups or go out running until exhaustion, go swimming or something like that. And don't fall into being sick immediately. Don't think that you are going to actually become sick immediately you do have a chance to beat it. That goes for food poisoning, in my opinion, as well. If you feel the food poisoning, I mentioned it the other day, I think on my personal story, that uh, in recent years, when I've become fully healthy, before I would just get food poisoning, you know, every now and then, maybe once a year, even something like that. Maybe not full-blown food poisoning, but you know, you get, you don't feel good from some kind of food, something like that. Well, in recent years, when I feel like I've been working at like 99%, 100% of full functionality, I feel something weird with food, I have an unstoppable urge to throw up from it. And that's not bulimia, it's, it's your body telling you, I don't want this, get rid of it. And if you do get rid of it, you're probably gonna wake up feeling fine. I'll still take diatomaceous earth in that case as well. Next question here that I've got. Do we have a finite number of cells that our body can produce? It's an interesting question. Well, there's a lot of people saying that there is an inf a finite number of heartbeats that you can have, a finite number of heartbeats. But a finite number of cells, this is a, it's a bit weird to me. So every time your cell is going to regenerate, and this happens all the time, first of all, it needs the 90 essential nutrients to do that. Second of all, you want to avoid all those bad foods that we started with. I'm not going to go into the whole list again. If you avoid the bad foods, you're avoiding cellular damage, right? And if you have the 90 essential nutrients, then you have everything your body needs to regenerate all of its cells, all of its tissues properly. But even when everything is working, 100% correctly, 
the, the theory goes mistakes, little bits of genetic mistakes, copying errors. Basically, it adds up over time. So if you're pause there for a second for poor connection, it said a lot of people think that you need a faster metabolism, but actually a slower metabolism is better for lifespan. This is part of why calorie restriction is good for longevity. There's a few reasons why. One of the reasons is because it slows down the metabolism. When the, metab when the metabolism is slowed down, the need for cellular regeneration slows down as well. So the, the faster you're working your body, the harder you're working your body, the more your cells are actually going to need to regenerate. The more times they regenerate, the more likely they are to make mistakes. So the question was, is there a finite number of cells or finite number of cell divisions is, is how I would take that. And I would say no, because the amount of times that your cells can regenerate without mistakes will change. If you don't have adequate nutrition, your cells are going to make more and more mistakes. If you are eating more toxic things, more things that cause damage, oxidized oils and free radicals and burned meats and all this stuff, glutens and other, things that are attacking the cells and damaging the cells, now they're going to need to regenerate more and they are more likely to make mistakes as well. So having adequate nutrition, basically long story short, in calorie restrictions, calorie restriction is part of the longevity recipe that we don't talk about enough. All of the longest lived populations practice calorie restriction in some way, in some form. Most of them do it by accident because they're just poor. They just don't, they can't afford a lot of food and they live in places where they got to cultivate their own food and they just, as a consequence, they don't eat that much. But all of the longest lived populations are religious in some way, all of them, not necessarily the Christian religion or whatever, but they all believe in God and all of them consciously don't eat for certain periods of time. Some of them do it once a week. Some of them do it for a whole month, something like Lent or something like that. They don't not eat the whole month, but they severely re restrict the amount of food that they eat that whole month. Some of them consciously practice it all the time, right? But either way, all of the longest lived populations practice calorie restriction. Again, this slows down the metabolism and it slows down the rate that you actually need to regenerate your cells. So finite number of cells that our body can produce, no, you can throw off that process and you can support that process with all the regular stuff that we talk about. You don't need to take any specific nutrient for that either. It's just all blanketing of all the regular advice. Someone says here, can you hack growing hormone and keep your body developing in the 20s and 30s? It's a weird question and I've got this question probably a hundred times or more. You know, Even in the last year, probably a hundred times or more. There's a lot of people who are like 18 or 22 or 25 who want to keep growing. I'm not sure why. Maybe they're short and they want to be taller. I don't know. I, I don't think so. Now, we, we do seem to change in height in generations, both up and down, as our nutrition varies. You know, there's populations that have been shown to get shorter and shorter, uh, especially ones that have only been eating corn and stuff like that. They've been shown to get shorter and shorter. And they've also been shown to get taller in different places with different nutrition. So. Part of this is, is genetic, I think, but part of this, I think, is genetically determined in embryo and womb and you know, based on your, your parents' life cycle and how tall, not just how tall they've gotten, but the nutritional environment that they've grown up in. And this is part, probably part of the reason why a lot of people can give birth to children that are much taller than them and also much shorter than them. So if you are already 18 or 20 or 30, this person's asking to their 30s, then probably not. You're probably done growing. And I wouldn't see that as a problem. This is just like a, a self-conscious thing about being short or something. I'm not sure. Or uh, maybe the question is about, you know, taking growth hormone and you know, continuing to develop muscularly. I'm not really sure what the actual root of the question is, but I would say no, not really. If you have adequate nutrition, your body's going to grow to its maximum ability. By the way, cholesterol is basically the, the growth hormone of the body. You know, it's just going to be stimulating growth. So if you're consuming enough cholesterol and you're avoiding the bad foods that would inhibit absorption of cholesterol, your body's going to grow to its maximum ability. That's uh, not a problem. Maybe the question was about muscle development. I'm not really sure. The person should DM and clarify on that. So the last question here that I've got that I wrote down is the sciatic nerve pain. And while I've got some time here, I don't have that much time, but I'll go through and I'll look through some questions, see if I can answer any questions for you guys. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and type them in right now. But what to do about sciatic nerve pain? Well, the first easiest, obvious thing for me is the 90 essential nutrients, getting off the bad foods. Same old story, we don't really need to go into that much detail about it. Other than that, it's that bone and joint group that is excessively important. 
Salt could also be important anytime you have nerve pain. The electrolytes have a lot to do with the nervous system. So just making sure that your blood sugar is good, right? Remember we talked about blood sugar, how that contributes to circulation problems. This could easily translate into a nerve pain. But there is more to this story. There was more to the story about sciatic nerve pain. Now, I don't know if I posted the video here. I posted it on my personal YouTube. I posted it on my Transcend Towers account. It's a video about a guy named Mike. I also wrote about this in my book, Fake Diseases. And I, I wrote about it in the autoimmune category. I used the autoimmune chapter to tell my story with radiation. Because when I met Mike, I was not in pain. I had already been relieved of all of my pain and all of my symptoms from taking the 90 essential nutrients. But he asked me when I, he was selling frequency tuning discs, these things we put on bracelets, but it's just a, a disc that does the work. He asked me if I had any pain and I said no. But his story is that he was in a severe car accident and he was basically hunchback for nearly 30 years in severe pain and sciatic pain was one of his main problems. Now his pain did not go away immediately by adding the frequency tuning discs but it began to get better immediately. And over the course of weeks and months, he was able to stand up completely straight and not have his sciatic nerve pain anymore. And he was on the 90 essential nutrients. Now, he's quite a strong guy too, right? It's got nothing to do with physical strength or anything like that. I've seen a number of people heal from things that wouldn't heal by adding frequency tuning discs or by being aware of radiation, but you need something more powerful than just being aware if you just reduce your exposure to, to radiation, EMF from the phone, from the Wi-Fi and all that, that should help anybody. But the frequency tuning discs how, are charged with the same frequencies of your nervous system, skeletal, skeletal system, and your muscular system. So it enhances those systems. And there's been a lot of people, most of them haven't taken our nutritional advice, but in our store in real life in Windsor, Ontario, we're right across the hallway from a pharmacy. So there is constantly people going in and out to refill their prescriptions on all kinds of things. And we'd poach lots of people from there. That's a big part of our business, basically saying, hey, you don't need to be on these drugs all the time. You can fix that problem. A lot of them were with pernicious injuries, car accidents, work injuries, and sciatic nerve pain is very, very common. Now, th again, the nutrition side of me says, well, you should do the nutrition and the radiation. You know, we know that a lot of these problems can go away just by nutrition. <clears throat> but I also know that a lot of people can't get rid of it with just nutrition. A lot of it have to address the radiation. Now I'm gonna tell you a personal story here because as when I met Mike, I didn't have any pain. I also wasn't living in the city. Also, this was years ago. And now the radiation is so much stronger. All of us have more powerful phones. The cell phone towers have gotten absolutely out of control. Lots of people live next to high voltage power lines and no matter what they do, they can't get a good sleep. Now if you can't get a good, and this is because the body is constantly excited, right? All the cells are constantly excited. Not only that, but on a larger scale that you can actually see in live blood analysis, you can see that the blood vessels can't do their job properly. They're all crinkled up and clumped together from radiation. This could happen from pharmaceutical needles. You know, there's, there's many different things. Dirty blood, we call it undigested proteins getting into the blood. This can clump the blood up. Well, if the blood is all crinkled up, the blood vessels are all crinkled up. They can't do their job. They can't, they can't deliver nutrients properly. They can't deliver oxygen properly, which is absolutely key here. You're breathing in in order to put oxygen into the blood so that the blood can deliver that oxygen and nutrients and sugar to all of the cells. So if this process is interfered with, your body's going to start failing in numerous, numerous ways. And the, there was somebody even in our DM today said, Hey, I'm on the products. I've been on the products for a while. I'm off the bad foods and I still have chronic fatigue. Well, this is chronic fatigue. This is what chronic fatigue is. Chronic fatigue is multiple nutrient deficiencies. But this whole system can just be stopped dead in its tracks by radiation. I know this question was only about sciatic pain. I don't know who this person is. If they just got on the program and got off the bad foods and get on the 90 essential nutrients, maybe it'll go away. It should go away. But there's a growing group of people and it's going to become everyone because this problem isn't going away. This radiation problem isn't going away. I know I sound like a lunatic talking like this. This is why I left this question for last. This is my last question here. It's because the problem is getting worse and worse and more and more people are going to be affected by it. Just like gluten intolerance is basically 100% of people now because wheat has changed, right? It's not the wheat that our great grandparents grew up on. And even the old people now are having problems with it. Now, I believe that those old people were born more, more robust, especially if they were raised on a wood stove and raised away from a city and all that. And each generation is getting weaker and weaker. Each generation is getting more and more sensitive to gluten. But each generation is also seems to be getting more and more impacted by radiation, whether they're sensitive or not, whether they can feel it or not. So... 
this radiation problem is going to continue to be a, a rising problem in the nutrition business because it's not just our business, it's across the entire spectrum of the alternative health community. They talk about it at the dinner table, they talk about it behind closed doors, but they don't often get on their accounts and say, we are getting a harder and harder time getting results with people with the same protocols or with even better protocols. In our business, our products keep getting better and better. Meaning some people, they get phenomenal results super quick, but there's becoming more and more people who can't heal. And I know it's not that they can't heal, it's that they're missing the third piece of this puzzle. One is the bad foods. Number two is the 90 essential nutrients, nutrient deficiencies. Number three is radiation. And I'm one of these people, by the way, right? So when I met Mike and I got introduced to this whole EMF and the frequency tuning disc, I didn't live in the country, but I didn't live in the city either. And I was healed. I, I wasn't in pain. I was feeling fine. And I moved further into the country too after that. So I, you know, I was more fine after that. Well, now, especially, I don't know what happened in the last few years, cell phone towers, got more, they moored cell phone towers, 5G, whatever it is, they turn the, crank the power up, basically, there's more power. I live in the deep, deep country, I live on the Canadian Shield, it's a giant rock, basically, that's bigger than many countries, it's bigger than many countries combined, actually, it's an, an enormous rock. I feel great up there, I sleep great up there, like, unbelievably great, you know, and I was an insomniac for 25 years until I got on the right nutrition, it, it basically got rid of the insomnia, but... I'd never still, I'd never had just such an amazing deep sleep up north and I wake up just fully rejuvenated with energy. That is how we are supposed to feel all the time. Now, my car, I've upgraded my car, upgraded my old one, died and I had to get another one. It's a 2011, I can't turn the Bluetooth off on it. Even a small drive affects me, I can feel it, I can feel the buzz. Once you get away from it, by the way, for a while, you start to become more sensitive, I believe, and once you pay attention to it, you become more sensitive. So I do feel it, even driving in my own car, I don't like it. It's radiating my whole body. I feel agitated. By the time I get anywhere, you know, I'm, I'm excited. It's, I don't feel good. Your body needs to be in rest and digest to, re to rest and digest. It needs to be able to restore itself. Sleep is a huge part of this. I'm going into length on this. Why? Because this is going to be a, a more and more important thing for people to understand. A lot of people are avoiding the bad foods and they're on the supplements and they're not taking into account that they live in a city or that they work in a hospital, or they work in a school, or they work in an airport, or they work in a coffee shop with a cell phone tower on the roof. You are never gonna be able to be healthy in this condition, I promise. And for the people who are asking, you know, I've been on the products for a while, I'm off the bad foods, I still got pains all over, I still can't sleep. Do you live next to a high voltage power line? If the answer is yes, you have to move. Do you live next to a step down station? Can you hear that buzz from that step down? So you have to move. Do you live above a subway line? You have to move. Do you have a cell phone tower on your, the roof of your building, you have to move. This is no joke. This means that these problems are not going to go away until we address this. And I know it's a huge thing. It's no easy thing for me to say. At one point in time, I did live beside a tower. It almost killed me. I had to leave, right? And it was a big deal. For a lot of people, this is gonna be the biggest deal. We're already selling supplements that are not the cheapest in the world, even with these radiation devices, which are also, it's a good, it's, it is a good investment, but it, it can be a large investment it's still not gonna mitigate it. I'm 100% convinced about this. I do believe that the frequency tuning discs are the cheapest and most effective anti-radiation device that an enhancer of our own systems to protect against EMF is still not enough. You, we cannot out-mitigate living in a city. We cannot be in a city. And the point that I was getting at earlier with the car, a lot of times where I'm driving, I'll stop at my mom's house first. She's down south, she's my, my hub to go anywhere else. I can't sleep at her house. She doesn't live next to a, a cell phone tower. She doesn't live next to a high voltage power line, but she lives in the suburbs of a major, major city, Toronto. And it's highly bathed in radiation. I believe this bubble in the cities and in the suburbs is just so strong that whether you can feel it or not, it's affecting you. And if you have a chronic pain that won't go away, if you have chronic fatigue that won't go away, that's what's causing it. Because your body is not able to actually get the nutrients it needs for energy to the cells. So we're, you know, we're, we're trying to hack it by consuming too much coffee and sugar and whatever and that's also not helping it it's exacerbating the problem even further but the point is here that chronic fatigue i believe is directly caused by radiation in the in the vast majority of cases and this whole well, this whole question was about sciatic nerve pain and my point here is because since i can't sleep properly at my mom's and it's not a nutrition thing i'm on the same nutrition nothing changed you know I've, I've got even other devices. I've got the devices. I wear the pendants. I got Shungite. I got Organite. I got, I got all this stuff. I can't get a good night's sleep at my mother's house. 
if I get a nine hour, 10 hour sleep, which is too much, I'm usually sleep six, seven hours and I wake up fine in my country house. Someone says putting your forehead on the ground helps. Sure, it, it, it might help, it might help. But the point is no matter what I do, I can't sleep properly at my mom's. And that means I don't ever fully rest. That means you don't ever fully restore. Now, if this is one night, it's not the biggest deal in the world. But here, I'm in Texas right now, I'm in a suburb, in a city basically. I feel the same thing but worse. And I haven't slept properly in two months. This is the truth, and being honest with you guys. It's not a nutrition thing. My nutrition is fine, it's not a blood sugar thing. It's not a blood sugar thing, my blood sugar is fine. I got salt, we got five salt lamps in this house. I got salt lamps on both sides of me. And I've, I was becoming very desperate to even try and find something that would knock me out. I'm not gonna, this is not a product pitch here, but we make a couple sleep products. I've never taken these before, I've never needed them. Usually I just take supplements and I just have my regular day and I just go to sleep and I wake up, right? But here in this city, I was, it was killing me, I can't sleep. Not only can I not sleep, this question was about sciatic nerve pain. I was feeling pain in my, in my legs when I'm taking my pants on and off. Never happened before, I grew up in pain. I spent my whole first 25 years of my life in pain constantly but I never had such sharp nerve pains before. It's extremely worrying to me and I knew it was because I hadn't slept. Right? So I'm, I'm basically turned into an insomniac again, except the radiation has turned up even higher than it was when I was a kid. So I was taking my pants on and off and I was having leg pains. Again, it's not a nutrient thing. I don't need to double my nutrients. I take more than enough nutrients. Someone's saying, turn your mobile phone off when you go to bed. Trust me, I know this, I do this, right? Trust me, we're not allowed to have electronics in our room when we're sleeping. I, we, honestly, that's first that's step one you know that's it's 101 no we're not doing that we got the salt lamps in here we've even got a, a, a special diffuser we turn it on it has its essential oil blend and it puts negative ion water droplets into the air and attracts the particles to it and it's got it's we've got the sleep formula that's supposed to help you sleep in the air i was becoming so desperate that i started taking sleep ease this is a product that's got all of the regular herbs that you've heard for sleeping and you've heard me say that you don't want to be reliant on medication or medicines, plant medicines, pharmaceutical medicines, it doesn't matter. And you don't want to be reliant on mel melatonin. Melatonin's in here as well. It's got some vitamins. It's got the plant extracts that again are always talked about for helping sleep. I'm talking about passion flower, valerian root, lemon balm, chamomile, right? This is all the stuff that people are saying you have a problem sleeping. The herbalist is going to give you these things. It's got all of them in it. Plus it's got melatonin, which I don't want to take. I don't want to take any of this stuff. I've never needed this stuff before. I'm not going to take a pharmaceutical sleeping medication. I would take that and this hemp, hemp product, hemp FX, right? To CBD to help me sleep. Now this does a combination with this and the, the sleep formula thing in the room, it does sufficiently. It knocks me out and it forces me to sleep. At my mom's house, I can sleep, like I can get to sleep. But the problem is I'll, I'll sleep too long because I know my body's trying to restore itself and it's not doing it. I'll sleep too long and I won't wake up rested. I'll wake up still tired. And the point is here, I've had to go to great lengths to just knock myself out to get to sleep and I still can't sleep enough, can't wake up restored. And I'm having symptoms that a lot of people complain about, chronic fatigue. Right now I know I'm jacked up, I'm on here on a live but I've got chronic fatigue right now in the city. Someone says, I moved to the country, my health is incredibly easier to maintain, I sleep good and I have dreams. I moved to the country too, and it did work. But my point is that anybody who's living in a city, I've only been here for a couple of months and I'm falling apart, literally. I know I'll turn it on and I'll, you know, I'm putting the energy on here again for the live and for the stories and whatever, but I can see it. I can see the slight wrinkles in my eyes. I can see that I'm tired. I feel tired all the time. I'm having nerve pains that I never had before in my entire life. I'm getting lots of grays in my beard. Lots of hairs are coming out of my head. This is not a nutritional thing. This is a radiation thing. Why did I go so freaking long on this? Because most of the people that follow us live in a city. Most of the people that follow us, someone says here, we cannot move to the country. I get it, right? This is it, I get it. This is such a huge issue. Number one, the first thing that we have to do for this is inform ourselves. I do recommend the book, The Invisible Rainbow. I also recommend a book called Zapped, Zapped by Ann Gittleman. Now The Invisible Rainbow goes into great detail and I just reviewed that on my personal page. Maybe someone can help me out here and type in my personal page for, in the comments for people, but uh, it's, in the, it's in the description of this account, Wallex Warriors, you can see hosted by Ryan Alexander, that's me. I just reviewed The Invisible Rainbow. I do believe it's a mandatory book that everybody should read and share it with people because this information needs to get out. Why? Because 
like this person just said, we cannot move to the country. I understand not everybody can move to the country and especially they can't do it today. But the app, and someone said, read Zapped here. Definitely read Zapped because Zapped is more of a handbook. Zapped by Ann Gittleman, that is more of a handbook. You can use that to learn about all the things that are gonna be in your house that are gonna be affecting you. Thank you, Merlin, for typing that in. And you can learn about things that you might not have known about, like your refrigerator and stuff like that. Well, the invisible rainbow goes into great detail on why this problem is so bad in the first place, how it's been bad since the dawn of electricity and how it's only, only getting worse. We need to inform ourselves about this issue so that we can actually take political action about it. Why? Because you can't just burn down cell phone towers. If you burn down cell phone towers, the cell phone company is going to put them right back up. They have insurance, right? It doesn't harm them at all. If anything, they just jack the price up subtly of the, of the users that are paying for it. That's one thing. Become informed and spread that information. Why? Because this whole 90 essential nutrient thing, this whole eating good thing, this is becoming null and void. Why? Because it doesn't matter how much nutrition we have. If our blood cannot get it to the cells, null and void. There's going to be more and more people who fail to get results because of the radiation, not because of the nutrients. Nutrient deficiency is a problem. It's a huge problem. Bad foods is a problem. It's a huge problem. Right? These are pharmaceutical needles is a problem. It's a huge problem. Nothing is a bigger problem than the radiation. Someone's talking about, what about organ, organ or organite beneath towers? Trust me, I got organite. Trust me, I put organite beside the cell phone tower when I lived there. I put it in the, beside the, everything, everything. You know, I've done this. No, it does not mitigate it completely. Nothing mitigates it completely. Nothing, let me repeat that. Nothing, there's nothing that mitigates the radiation completely. There has been no effort to make safe, technologies, particularly safe wireless technologies, but there's been absolutely no effort to, to make safe electrical technologies for us to use. There needs to be consumer demand first and foremost, and we are miles away from that. This is why we need to get more informed on this. You need to read The Invisible Rainbow and you need to share that with people. Someone says, I stay in the GTA and I think I see a tower every 100 meters. It is, it's true, it's a lot. And this bubble that's created in these cities and these suburbs is inescapable, you can't get out of it. Even in the country, there's a problem. Why? Because the military and all this stuff, they beam high radiation into the atmosphere. And this, there's such huge sources that we can actually, there's nowhere on earth that we can go to fully escape it. But getting out of the city or the suburb is the first step. It's the biggest step. Now, obviously again, so lots of people can't do that. Lots of people can't move out of the city right now. That why, that's why you need to learn about it, inform yourself spread that information because someone is going to be able to do something about it. Someone you know, or someone you know, who knows somebody, they're going to be a lawyer, they're going to be a politician, they're going to be a business owner, they're going to be someone who can do something and can raise their voice. Either way, the, the entire world needs to know about this problem. Now, what else can you do? You can minimize your exposure first and foremost, you can keep the phone off of your body all the time. At our store, when we do our demonstration to sell our frequency tuning discs, the first step of that is showing people how weak the cell phone makes them. Lots of people walked away without buying a disc, but they stopped putting their phone in their pocket. They stopped putting it in their breast pocket. They stopped putting it in their bra. They stopped putting it in their purse. They wanted to keep the phone off of them. You can use a silver lined case. I like Spiro gear, Spiro gear, S P E R O gear at Spiro gear here. You can check out their products. I like them for their phone cases and for their clothing, their protective clothing. That's one step you can make. You can get the phone off of you. I've been advocating for a very long time getting rid of a phone bill. Stop paying your phone bill. Why? Because when you pay a phone bill, you pay for cell phone towers. It's a little bit difficult to live without a phone bill, but you can do it. I have posted a video called How to Live Without a Cell Phone. It's on my YouTube. It's also on my Transcend Towers account. Again, if you need these links, message us and we'll give you any of these links. I'm not going to type in any of them right now. And when we save this live, it's not going to show up for them anyways but I've lived without a cell phone bill for a number of years. What this does is number one, it stops paying for cell phone towers. I feel good about that. Number two, it causes people to ask me questions and stuff. What do you mean you don't have a phone number? Oh, I can give you a burner number. Why don't you have a phone number? Because of the radiation, because of the problem. It allows me to at least start the conversation with it. But that's not why I did it primarily. Primarily I did it because I want to reduce the functions on my phone. That means airplane mode is on 100% of the time. Data mode is off 100% of the time and Bluetooth is off 100% of the time. Recently, not the second because I'm plugged in here because my phone's gonna die if I don't, I've been using an ethernet connection as well. Normally I'll wake up in the morning and I'll do all the messages, I'll answer all the messages. And I usually don't do it throughout the day, by the way. I'll just, I mitigate my time on that. 
control my time on that. I do that in the morning during that time. Recently, I just got this adapter. It's plugged into the ethernet and it's not on Wi-Fi. It's helped. I've noticed the buzz. And by the way, talking about devices, I have three different devices on my phone and a piece of Shungite. It's not enough. Even though each one of them does something, I feel the difference. I feel I'm sensitive enough to feel the difference. It's still not enough, right? I've got frequency tuning. I got four frequency tuning discs on me, two here, two on the ankle. I've got a big EP2 pendant. Now I've got crystals. We've got crystals all over the place. We've got salt lamps all over the place. It's not enough. There are a few other devices that I could go for. I promise it's not going to be enough. So you want to reduce your exposure first and foremost. You can block major sources. You can block the wall behind your smart meter. You can block the wall behind your refrigerator, especially if there's a bedroom there or it's your couch is there or something on the other side of the wall with the refrigerator. You can use tin foil, any sort of metal foil. You can use baking sheets or you can use EMF protecting paint, although that costs a lot more than foil or baking sheets. And you can, you can block the major sources. If you don't have an EMF meter, I don't necessarily recommend that you buy one because they're kind of expensive. A good one is expensive and a lot of people buy one for 350 bucks and they only use it once and they go around their house and they find the major sources and you don't really need to use it again. You can contact your local fire department and it's very likely that they will sell, send a firefighter over with an EMF meter and they will check all of, around your house for you for free. They should do that for free. A firefighter should do that for free. You can also call an electrician if they're your friend, probably they'll probably do it for free. They'll come over with a meter, they'll help you find, oh, you've got something coming in through this wall. Maybe it's a smart meter out there. Maybe it's your neighbor doing something. I don't know, your neighbor's got an appliance and it's only coming through that one part of the wall. That's where you wanna block these things out. You don't need to tinfoil your entire house. That's not the point. You wanna tinfoil or EMF paint or baking sheet, wherever those major sources are. So we've reduced our exposure. We blocked our major sources. And I do recommend protection devices. I do recommend frequency tuning discs is the number one cheapest thing that you can do to enhance your own body to protect itself against this radiation. Salt lamps are cheap. Walmart sells salt, salt lamps. A lot of people got a problem with Walmart. The people at the boutiques, the crystal boutiques are selling the same salt lamps. I promise they're just selling them for three times more. You can go to Walmart and get yourself the cheapest salt lamp that you can find. They do work, they do matter. It's not enough. Someone keeps asking about crystals. Promise crystals are not enough. You can, you can Google that. You can Google crystals good for radiation. Promise it's not enough. Shungite helps. I sell Shungite. Promise it's not enough. All right, so this next major thing, we've said three things here. Reduce exposure for all the major sources. Eliminate Bluetooth completely. Cancel your phone bill. Please cancel your phone bill for your own good and for the good of this movement. Cancel your phone bill. Don't ever keep your phone on your body. Don't ever put your phone to your head. Don't use anything wireless. Get rid of every wireless device that you have. Plug everything into to Ethernet that you possibly can. Shield and block the major sources. That includes protective clothing, silver line protective clothing. That includes this part of this blocking thing. Reduce, block, protect. The protection devices are the third thing. The fourth major thing is political. Again, none of this stuff is going to mitigate the, a tower down the street. None of this is going to mitigate living in a city. None of this is going to mitigate being in a mall with 50,000 people with these phones in their pockets that are all giving out numerous signals and looking for other signals and there's signals coming in everywhere. None of that's going to stop that. This is a cultural change and a political change that needs to happen. And even further, again, a lot of us say we feel incredibly better out in the country there's some people who know that are, they're so sensitive they can't even go to the country. They can't even escape it. Lots People commit suicide over this. It's no joke. People got the tinnitus that never goes away because of this. Some of it, sometimes it goes away right with the frequency tuning discs. I've seen people stop shaking from Parkinson's by putting a disc in their hand for a couple of minutes. Seriously. Right? So this, this stuff can help us a lot, but we have to realize that we have to leave the cities. And if you can't do that right away, then you better put some effort into the movement to, to make our world safer. Part of that, again, is big time political. You might not have any political power. I don't have any political power. All I've got is the power to, to yap my mouth here on social media. And I just spent half an hour doing it, I think, half an hour, just talking about this one subject. I talk about this all the time. I've had this cell phone tower account, Transcend Towers, for years, just to promote this, just to, to get this idea into people's head that, hey, this is a problem and we need to do something about it. Some people are gonna have a lot more power than you do we need to communicate with everybody. We need to, to attack this at all fronts. Someone said earlier again, how do we get rid of towers? My answer is you can't get rid of them unless it's taken down politically. Some people have won lawsuits against cell phone towers. Someone says what we can spend our money on is political power. That's true. So stop paying phone bills. First and foremost, stop paying your phone bill. I don't care if it comes in a, 
in a, in a package with your cable, cancel it. For that matter, cancel the freaking cable. <laughs> Who are you paying for the mainstream news media? Cancel it. So a lot of people say that to me. I get my phone bill, my whole family gets the phone bill. Cancel all of them as a strong political statement and as a way to spread this awareness with the other people because you're going to have to contact everyone you know and tell them, you know, I don't have a phone number anymore. I'm using this burner number. Contact me on Instagram. Contact me on Facebook, whatever. Watch the video, how to, how to live without a cell phone. Again, go to my personal account and uh, find me or DM me. It's, if you want these links, send it. Uh, maybe I'll post that again on here. Maybe I did post it on here. I don't even know. Cancel the phone bill. Continue working with this politically because this problem is not going to go away. This, it all this all this stemmed from a question about sciatic nerve pain. And my point is, maybe, because there's still, we still help people here with the nutrition message, right? This is, people come to us all the time with all these problems. We give them the nutritional advice. Some people take 10% of that advice and they still change their life. But there's a growing minority of people who no matter what they do nutritionally are not going to heal. I am one of these people being in the city right now. I cannot feel healthy. I cannot feel rested. I feel chronic fatigue all the time. It's got nothing to do with nutrition. This is going to, this is going to eclipse all the other problems and make nutrition null and void. So if we don't do something to reverse this, we're going to lose. I was in the middle of saying that uh, people have won lawsuits against towers. A few of them, a few of them have won. It's mostly been on uh, aesthetic grounds. I Meaning it's about looks or it's about property value. I think in America, it's actually illegal to sue a tower company over health grounds. You have to do it on aesthetic grounds. Some of them have been won. But my point here is that's not about individual towers. My point here is it is about this invisible rainbow. It's about this uh, blanketing of EMF that is the real problem. So taking down a, a tower or two, even if we took down all the cell phone towers right now, it wouldn't stop the problem. The problem is our, our, the way that we collect energy electricity, the way that we use high voltage power lines, the way that we use step down stations, basically the fact that the entire electrical industry, all electrical appliances, subways, every city, no one has stringent enough guidelines on this to make these technologies actually safe for us. So it's a, it's a massive problem. We're very, very late to the party. We're over 150 years late to the party. You know, and if there's any chance of reversing it, it's right now. And the problem is we might not have a chance to reverse it. And uh, I, I, don't, I don't mean to get too dramatic here. You know, as I'm going to end this too. I said that I would look through here and answer some questions. I'm not going to have time for that. I've been rambling here uh, pretty hard. But we've been saying in this business, not even just us, mainstream magazines are even commenting on this generation of Americans specifically. I'm in America right now. This generation of Americans are going to be the first generation of Americans that out, don't outlive their parents, meaning they're going to die before their parents. Whether if your parents live to 70, we're not going to. People are predicting this. We agree with this. We agree with this because nutrient deficiency is getting worse, because the bad foods are getting worse. I also extremely agree with this because of the radiation. The radiation is reaching levels right now where our children literally might not be able to reproduce. You know, and that's not, this is not a 5G thing. My cell phone tower account existed long before 5G. This is not saying 5G is going to make us infertile. No, all of this is adding up to the point where people can't heal their pain. People can't get rid of their chronic fatigue, regardless of what they do. And no, they're not going to be able to have healthy pregnancies. You know, we're going to be very lucky if this uh, generation that's younger than me and my age, we're going to be very lucky if, if they can have healthy children. I know a lot of friends of mine that have children that are not healthy. I'm talking about birth defects. I'm talking about serious problems. Those children might not, I have, sorry to any of my friends that are listening, sorry to anybody who's got a kid right now, you know, it sucks that we live in this world, but I, don't, I believe that a lot of those children are, are not going to be able to reproduce at all, you know, and it's a, this is a sad reality. So right, we got real dark here in the end of this talk here. For all the people who have just joined and have come in and out, we spend, I'm going to save this live, we spent a long time talking about blood sugar and cholesterol and the bad foods and the nutrients and all that. And I spent the last half of this year ranting about radiation and uh, I should use my voice here on this channel to speak more and more about radiation. I, I know I'm a bit biased. I'm in the anti-radiation business. I sell anti-radiation devices. Guess what? I'm in this business because I recognized that it was a problem. I was shown that this was a problem and I was also shown amazing healing from this part of the business. I wrote in my book, Fake Diseases, that the most incredible things I've ever seen in this health business has been by radiation because nutrients take a while. Right? If someone says radiation is the real plague, I, I agree. Right? Nutrients take a while. 
right? I've seen amazing things with nutrients, right? I've seen people rebuild their bodies. I've seen people avoid knee replacement surgeries. I've seen people lose 100 pounds or more. I've seen incredible things, seen life-changing things with nutrition, but it doesn't happen overnight, right? In the radiation business, we've seen people stand up out of wheelchairs, right? We stand out of wheelchairs. I'm not talking about paraplegics. I'm talking about people that are wheelchair bound. Some of them are super fat. Some of them are falling apart. Some of them are shaky and they got, they got the MS and they got, I'm not mocking them. I'm saying this is how they show up to us, a mess. And I've seen some of these people stand up out of wheelchairs and walk around like, they've, they, like they remembered walking as they were kids from adding one frequency tuning disc. You know, we're talking about minutes here. Now we're saying that by adding these types of devices, it gets better over time, but we've seen such amazing, incredible things in a short period of time that that's why I'm so dedicated to this, this aspect of the business, this uh, radiation business. And by the way, the nutrition, you gotta be on forever, right? That's, we depend on repeat business. These things you can collect, right? I didn't buy all of the anti-radiation devices at once, you add them up, and over time, you've got a nice collection of them and so it, these are the minimum things that we can do to protect ourselves. And on the maximum level, this is why I went dramatic. On the maximum level, a lot of people are never going to heal. They're never going to feel good again unless they leave the city. And on the whole, this problem is going to continue to get worse unless we take serious dramatic action. That means make noise about it. That means learn about it. That means share that information with others in full form, you know, in any way that you absolutely can. And hopefully within this generation, hopefully within the next 10, 20, 30 years, that's the realistic ex expectation here is that it'll take 10, 20, 30 years to make the sort of political and cultural changes to start taking down cell phone towers, to start to changing the way that we, we gather electricity and distribute it on high voltage power lines. It's not going to happen overnight, right? So we got to get involved in this right now uh, to the point where it becomes socially acceptable to tell people to turn off their cell phone when they come into your house, just like it's socially unacceptable for someone to come into your house with a lit cigarette or with muddy shoes. It should be the exact same thing and we're nowhere near there. So all of us, anybody listening to this, this is the most serious uh, issue of our time, right? We go on and on about nutrients, but this is the issue of our time. This is the issue that might end humanity. It's no joke at all. This might fully stop us from being able to reproduce in our tracks. And since there is nowhere on earth that we can escape to this, going out to the country is only one part of this. Going out to the country is, it's temporarily absolving the, the most major exposure. There's still cell phone towers in my little town, right? They're not as strong. I still sleep fantastic there, whatever. It's still a problem and it's still a growing problem. And I feel that I've ranted enough about this guys, by the way, but someone asked, how do I communicate without a phone? I want everybody to watch that video that, vi that I made, how to live without a cell phone tower. Again, if you can't find it, DM us for it. Maybe I'll post it on this account on IGTV, but please watch that. Video. I made that video for a reason. I strongly believe that's one of the most major things that we can do. And barely anybody has ever watched that video. So there's more people to watch our story every day than have ever watched that video. So watch that video, please. Learn how to communicate without a cell phone. Learn how to live without cell phone service, right? We will need to make our cell phones safer as well. That's another thing. These companies, they know that it's a problem. If you read the insert on your phone, it tells you not to put the phone to your head because they know it's a problem, right? So the, the cell phone itself is a problem, but turning off stopping the pain in the phone bill, turn it on airplane mode, that helps, it does, it reduces it. But we're gonna need to make cell phones safer. If you didn't know, they make cell phones safer in several countries, specifically European countries, because the consumer base has demanded safer technology and they've responded. They've made it so the signal only comes out the back and doesn't go through your head. We can do these types of things too, although the engineering changes, they need to be more stringent than that for sure. But we, we need to start with demand. There is no demand for this right now at all. So that, that's where we need to start, absolutely. Someone says, put that video on your story once a week so more people see it. Believe me, I've been, I've been promoting that video for a while. I don't know when I made it earlier this year, but I promote it all the time. And uh, more people need to watch it for sure. How to live without a cell phone. Again, it's on my YouTube. Message us for those links. Guys, I've got to stop here. We've got to We've got to go out and stuff. I've gone way too long on this. So I was going to answer some questions, but I don't have time. I appreciate all of you. Until next time, have a good day, everybody. I'm very excited to announce my newest book, Everything the Government Does is Bad for Us. And you can get the paperback on Amazon for just $9.99. And you can find the video read-along version or the audiobook on my website, noticebooks.org. And definitely check out my book, Fake Diseases. It covers all of the major topics that come up like birth defects, blood sugar problems, bone and joint problems, cancer, autoimmune problems, and more. And it's on Amazon for just $9.99.
And of course, make sure to check out our food page, Notice Foods, that's on YouTube and at Notice Foods on Instagram. We have a lot of content up there teaching you how to cook without the bad foods that Dr. Wallach describes and Dr. Glidden's 12 bad foods, all of that, all of the rules that you need to know. And we have experienced chefs and bakers who will answer the questions in those inboxes. Definitely get yourself a copy of Dr. Wallach's cookbook. This is basically a textbook teaching you everything you know about how to cook without the bad foods, particularly oil and gluten and all of the other problematic things on the list. This is 300 pages stuffed full of recipes, every traditional recipe that you could think of and modern dishes without the bad foods that they're usually made from. And I've also published a book in response to some of Dr. Wallach's criticisms, including the major articles that have been written against him on the internet. So if you are a Dr. Wallach fan or a Longevity distributor, I definitely recommend having this book in your toolkit. And all of my books, audiobooks, and links are available on my website, noticebooks.org. And if you want to see what is apparently my most controversial video that was banned from YouTube and BitChute, you can go to wagthedogtheory.com and view the whole uncensored version of the video. And I recommend downloading it if it is still there. And make sure to check out my channel for many other videos on a whole array of subjects. And my other channels are all in the description of this video. And if you'd like to talk to us directly, you can call us. Actually, you can call Judy. She's downriver Detroit. You can call from anywhere in the US, Canada, Mexico, UK, Australia, New Zealand, any other country you want to email us or send us a DM on whatever app that you want to contact us on. Instagram is super convenient for us. And that's for any sales or product information in those countries or any distributor information. 